what we're looking at here are all the parts associated with the pump circuit on a DCOE or DCO Weber carburetor. Um, first part we'll look at on the left here is our pump rod assembly. Now you'll notice beside it here, it's um, pulled apart. So we have our pump rod. Now the pump rod um, dictates how much fuel is delivered in a pump shot. As you can see, the assembled one beside is slightly longer. Um, that's going to be a slightly higher volume than one beside it. The spring beside it is actually what delivers the pump shot and it determines the rate at which it's delivered. So a softer spring will give a much slower uh, pump shot, still delivering the same volume, whereas the um, heavier spring, which is actually fitted on this one, is going to deliver a much more aggressive, faster pump shot. Still the same volume, but just over a much shorter period of time. Now, the other part we have here is a spill jet. Now, this is normally found in the bottom of the fuel bowl. It's a one-way ball valve and they're available in a number of different sizes. This one happens to be a 0.4 or a 40. Um, now, the idea is that it bleeds some of the volume of the pump shot back into the fuel bowl, so you can somewhat regulate the, the volume delivered. The next part we'll look at is the pump jet itself. It's probably the one most people would be familiar with. Um, it's available in a number of different sizes, accessible from the top of the carburetor. Um, it's got a flat side on one side here, which orientates the jet correctly because the, the hole which is here points directly down the barrel and on into the intake runners and into the engine. Now, basically, a smaller size will offer a much longer pump shot. So the same volume is going to be delivered just over a longer period of time, whereas a much larger pump jet is going to deliver that volume a lot faster over a shorter period of time. The last part we'll look at is, um, the, I guess they're just incidental, a part of the system. We can't change them, they need to be there. It's our pump demand valve weight, our pump demand ball, and our little brass cap that goes on that section. Now we'll just have a quick look at where all these individual components go in the carburetor body. First is the pump rod assembly, so it simply slots into this hole here. The piston or plunger slots down into the hole beside it. And then it's just a matter of using a flat blade screwdriver just to press this brass retaining clip down into the body. And that's um, installed now. When we look at it from side on, we'll see that it, it stands proud. When the throttle plate is actually open, it will drop down under the tension from the spring, under the plunger, and that's how we get our pump shot. The next part will be the pump jet itself. Please don't forget that there's a very small aluminium gasket that sits on the bottom half of the shaft, and there's also a flat section on that pump jet. Now that orientates towards the engine. It'll only go in one way. And that simply slides into our orifice there. The next part will be our pump spill jet or one-way ball valve. Remember there's a few different names for them so don't get caught out. That simply screws into the little boss just in the bottom section of the float chamber here. It's actually a very similar location across a number of the different carburetors such as IDA. IDF and DCD and they use the same part. And the last but not least section will be our pump demand ball and weight and they go into these little sections here. This little ball's job which I'm about to put in which goes in first is to seal the pump circuit um, and it's done so with the weight. So it's made um, in such a way that when the pump circuit is activated there's enough pressure to lift that ball and weight off its seat and then allow it to feed into the engine. This just ensures that it's not constantly leaking fuel into the, uh, into the engine under vacuum. Lastly, we just put our little cap on and we can do that up with a flat blade screwdriver. So that's our pump circuit on the DCOE carburetor.